This video is old school versus new school versus somewhere in the middle. <laughs> pen versus brush versus brush pen. I'm gonna put them to the test in the most epic way possible and you're gonna tell me which is the winner. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. We all already know that the pen is mightier than the sword, but is the pen mightier than the brush pen and the brush? Today I'm gonna put these three forms of creating line and line art to the test and battle them against each other, starting off with the pen. Now this is a pressure sensitive calligraphy pen. So it's not a brush pen per se, but it does have a slightly flexible rubber-ish tip. The reason I love this pen, and it actually is my absolute favorite pen of all time, is because not only can you get those really sharp, great details that you can with really fine felt tip pens, but you can get those really nice line weight variation lines. I find this pen really great to draw sort of comic book-esque artworks with, and it was the overall winner of my what is the best ink pen video, which was a lot of work and I'll link to that in the kind of the description, but I don't know if I'm biased. I wanna put it to the test and do some comparisons with a narrower range of creating artwork and open it up to something much more traditional. So the brush pen, and this is the Pentel pocket brush is really unique in that not only is it a pen in that it has an ink cartridge and feeds the ink through to the tip of that brush pen, you can get really, really intense variation, even thinner than that pen that I just showed you before because the tip is so fine, but much thicker because of how it's made. This isn't just a felt tip pen, this is actually a brush pen. It's really cool how this works. In fact, if I get tweezers, I can show you that by pinching the end of here, I can spread this apart. It actually is made up of bristles. They feel sort of like nylon, they, they're like, tiny plastic brush bristles, but manufactured to come to a really clean point on the end there. So you get those really clean, but accurate and expressive lines. Really satisfying. Is it better or more practical or maybe just more messy and unpredictable than the brush pen? And last but not least, we have the brush. Obviously what the brush pen is based on. <laughs> and going back thousands of years, the main way that line art has been drawn. I need to get ink. Hang on a sec. And this is of course the main difference and limitation between the brush pen and those ink pens with cartridges is I have to dip. And that will be a constant thing I'll have to do in comparing this to the actual pen cartridge pens. So we dip, we sort of wick the end there just so we get an even coating of that ink in the tip of the brush. And already that feels, that feels pretty cool. But as you can see, unless I get the right consistency in the brush, it sort of thins out and gets a uh, little texture. So I'm probably gonna have to get used to this or figure out the best way to load up the ink into the brush. There'll be a little more learning on the fly to do with this one, but maybe it feels cooler. Maybe going back to the roots of art itself in tradition and, and the way we first invented putting marks on paper or walls or whatever it is. Maybe there's just something more right about using a brush and ink, or maybe it's outdated and been surpassed for some very good reasons. I'm not sure, let's find out. And how we find out which of these is the best is I mean, the only way you can find out what's the best, and that is to battle them to the death. I am going to create a character, some sort of fighter, warrior, that represents the pen or ink or brush I'm using. One at a time, share my experience, create a cool illustration, and at the end of the video, I wanna find out which of the ink warriors you think wins the battle. So let's get this party started. With a good old reliable pen. And so our battle begins with the pen, specifically the Tombow Calligraphy pen, the WSBH150, if any of you wanna go check out the one that I use for pretty much everything. And honestly, as you can see, there's very good reason for that. It's not only reliable, but really satisfying and honestly really expressive. I feel like I have a huge amount of control with this pen. Like I can draw really thin, repeated lines for shading and really detailed outlines, but it also gives me the ability to just press firmly on its side and get some really nice line weight variation. It's just got that little bit of softness to it so that it's not quite a brush pen, but it's certainly leaning in that direction. But it doesn't come with the unpredictability of a brush pen. When I press down to get line variation, I get the amount of line weight variation that I press down. It's really reliable and it doesn't ever really get out of control. 
And as you can see, I went for a bit of a futuristic cyber pilot chick. Someone in some cool armor and a bit of a high tech look because I feel like this pen is the height of technology when it comes to art. I know that probably sounds dumb. and I, I guess it might make more sense with the stylus or something, but I'm just trying to give each of these warriors a bit of flavor. And I think of all the three contenders, this sort of synthetic rubber tip ink pen is the more futuristic and high tech of the bunch. Definitely the most reliable and consistent and as you can see, really capable of clean, sharp, but expressive results. I really love creating illustrations from my imagination and just bringing something to life that didn't exist before. And if you enjoyed watching me do this and want to learn how I do it, well, that's why I'm excited that this video is sponsored by Skillshare because, because I can share with you that I made a class on Skillshare to show you exactly how to do this. Taking you through every step of the process from conceptualization and brainstorm sketching, refined sketching, inking and different methods of inking from simple approaches to more complex techniques and cross shading and line shading, cross hatching, line weight variation, all the stuff you see me using in these illustrations here. I explain it all in detail and go beyond into color theory and coloring in your artwork. And then last but not least, open it up to a class project where you and class participants can join in, create your artwork, share them with each other and learn as a group. That's the power of Skillshare. And there's so much more on Skillshare. There are tens of thousands of incredible classes on Skillshare from illustrations illustration, drawing, design, and more. And you can get a free trial of Skillshare by using the link in the description, but this is limited to the first 1,000 people to use the link. So don't miss out, snatch it up nice and quick and see how amazing and powerful Skillshare is and you will not regret it. Links in the description and of course a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and partnering with me for so long. I really love Skillshare and you will too. Really, really proud of this. I just am so delighted with how she turned out. How can this be beat? I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have started with my favorite pen and drawn something so cool. I mean, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but you know what? There's nothing wrong with being proud of yourself and I'm proud of myself. All right. <sighs> I, I gotta, I gotta keep my punches going though. I can't let my guard down just cause I hit hard at first because the next competitor, the Pentel pocket brush is a bit of a beast. Now, is it capable of conveniently creating more detailed and more cool or larger scope illustration? I don't know, let's put it to the test and uh, you guys feel your way through what you think is working better for you and better for the illustration. The Pentel Pocket Brush. This is this is a completely unique beast to use. I don't know why I keep calling it a beast, but honestly, it's capable of so much, but it, I, maybe I call it a beast because it's somewhat hard to contain. It really takes a very finessed touch because this pen can get out of control very easily. It's really weird. Like in one moment, you can be doing the finest line possible and the next, if you just press down a little bit harder than you expected, you got this huge thick line. Now it does take getting used to, and I have used uh, line weight variation and brush uh, utensils long enough to have a bit of a feel for this very quickly and this pen in particular. So I'm pretty used to it, but if you want to try it out, just keep that in mind. And it might be frustrating for people who are diving right into it and haven't had the experience before. But if you have the experience and if you can put that practice to use, this brush pen is minty. As you can see, the ability to get expressive and create those really intense thick to thin lines really makes the illustration stand out in a way that's kind of hard to beat, honestly. You can get so thin to the point where you can use it for line shading. It's super hard to control compared to the pen I started off with, but uh, there's something really natural about the way the lines go down and how satisfying they are to look at going down as well. And then you have when it goes down thick. Again, hard to control, but if you can take Tame the beast, my God, you can do some really cool stuff and really add a lot of character and a lot of visual style to your illustrations. With my character here, I went with uh, somewhere in the middle between modern and old fashioned, a bit of a military dude who gets a bit messy and I'm gonna say is also a bit of a beast, a bit hard to control himself. He's a thick boy cause he could get pretty flexy. <laughs> and let's just say if he wants to go at something, it's gonna be hard to hold him back. I feel like this pretty well embodies the Pentel pocket brush and, and synthetic brush pens in general. There's also the Copic Gas and Fudo, which has a, has a very similar feel. It's basically the same pen. And I feel like this illustration really well represents what this pen feels like. And this is 
Also, a very cool illustration. Again, don't mean to toot my own horn, but I do, because I'm proud of it, and, and I think it feels right. It feels right for the Pentel pocket brush. I love it so much, I'm getting conflicted. I don't know how the the humble little brush is gonna do. Is it the underdog in this story? Is it gonna fight back and hit hard like Rocky, or is it gonna fall apart because it's been outdated and outdone? Let's find out. Now, I'm gonna start off with the flaws and get that out of the way because I basically went in expecting to deal with the flaws and that being a very frustrating process. There are two main ones. One is that you have to draw from the opposite direction of which hand you draw with. So I'm right-handed and I start on the left side of the page and the entire illustration has to kind of be drawn top to bottom, left to right. Otherwise, if you rest your palm on the ink, because it takes so long to dry, you're gonna smudge it and smear it and it's really hard to keep that clean look. So that is pretty difficult. And then the other thing, of course, is the dipping. You don't have have to dip those other pens. So there's a lot of manual work and it can be a little tricky to get right and it's pretty risky. If you don't have the right brush or the right ink, it can overflow or, or sort of rush into the paper very quickly. But with those flaws out of the way, there were some secret weapons with this warrior that I did not realize when I put these three to the challenge. The humble, old-fashioned, timeless brush actually has a few tricks up its sleeve that I discovered very quickly give it a huge edge against its competitors. One is that because I'm manually mixing the ink with the brush, I can also mix in water with the ink with the brush, meaning I can water it down and use it essentially like watercolors and do some shading. Rather than just leaning purely on line shading, I can gradient, I can do really cool like cell shading or even like really smooth gradients and, and shading if I take my time doing it. And that's a huge advantage as far as adding real three-dimensional elements to your image. And then the other huge advantage, as you can see, is I can lay this on thick. I can fill this whole page with black ink and it not inconvenience the illustration process at all. You start to feel like you can do that with the brush pen, but it very quickly hits a, its limitation of how much it wants to put down because it's limited to the flow of the cartridge. Whereas with the brush, you have no limitation. You can just grab that ink, slop it down, and just keep on going. So yeah, while it was a little inconvenient to have to draw in one direction and be super careful of overflow and manually dip the pen, the freedom and expressiveness that not only having the line weight variation of the brush pen, but the expressiveness and the added versatility of being able to gradient and use it like watercolor is insane actually really cool and I completely underestimated it going into this. So I feel like our third competitor hits as hard as our first two. This is an intense battle, guys. And I have to say the dipping itself wasn't as irritating or cumbersome as I thought it would be. You sort of get into a bit of a zen, which suits the character that I've drawn. Bit of a ninja warrior, a master of the old techniques, and it turns out some ancient secrets up his sleeve. The last one of which is the ability to flick the ink onto the paper to create some really cool spatter textures. We're really fighting dirty here because my god there is stuff that this humble little brush and ink is doing that the other two pens could not dream of. And this is my final artwork for the the brush, just the brush and ink. And my mind is kind of blown because I wasn't ready for it to be as cool and as fun to use for ink and, and line work and getting in those textures and gradients as it turned out to be. This is a this is a hard hitter, guys. Oh, and also this this brush was delightful to use. I'm gonna share what that is. It's the Princeton Round Number Two Mini Detailer. So if you wanna check that out for yourself, go check it out. I actually highly recommend it. I would use this, again, for more ink and line work, and I'm sure if you wanted to get more detailed, you just get a smaller size brush. So, we are hitting a bit of a difficult point because we have three combatants and they're all really good. <laughs> what to do, what to do. I actually don't know, I'm stumped. I came in this expecting it to be one, two, three. First, because I use it all the time and it is so practical, second and third. But honestly, they feel so evenly matched and so expressive in their own ways and really fun to use in their own ways. I cannot honestly put one above the other. And that is where you come in. Help me out, guys. I have created the combatants, 
It's up to you to fight to the death in the comments and let me know which one you peg as the winner and why, which you use, if any of them, or which you have been surprised by. Because I'm gonna be honest, I've been pretty surprised through the course of making this video. It's not as clean cut and as obvious as I at first expected. I love my illustrations too. Again, I'm really proud of them. This was really fun. And again, if you wanna check out how I do this sort of thing, that is a skill I share with you in my Skillshare class. So go check that out, link in the description, first 1,000 people. But with that said, that is it. These are some hardcore fighters, guys. Go get aggressive in the comments. Let me know what you think, what you feel, what you'd fight with. Otherwise, thank you for watching. This has been a lot of fun. I love the results and I hope you do too. Make sure to check out more videos over there that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. Otherwise, that is it for now. Make sure to subscribe for more fun with art and creativity. Like this video. And until next time, I'll see you later.